This video is going to be geared towards people who are new to sharpening or just getting started out. It's going to be pretty long. I'm going to give you as best a tutorial as I can. And I'm going to show you as I go what I'm looking at on the knife. So that if you see the same thing, you'll see how I deal with situations. And hopefully that will help you if you run across the same thing. So the first thing you got to do is learn how to hold the knife. The way I do it is with pressure. When I place the knife on the stone, I find the angle that I want to sharpen it. And then with just a twisting motion of my wrist, I just lock the knife in that position, twisting into the stone, and then I let the knife follow its own curve. I hear people describe it as, imagine trying to slice off a piece of the stone. And that kind of describes it pretty well, though you're not actually inverted enough to really dig into the stone. You want the knife more acute on the stone. So the closer you lay the spine towards the stone this way, the more acute the angle is going to be. The higher you raise that spine from the stone, the more obtuse it's going to be. Well, what's the difference? Well, the more acute the angle, so the closer the spine is to the stone, the better the knife is going to cut, the sharper it's going to get. The more obtuse it is, the more durable the edge is, but also the less sharpness you'll feel. Plus, it can seem like it dulls a little quicker than that fashion. However, if you've got a heavy-duty knife like a machete or a bushcraft blade, going obtuse is sometimes better than going acute. Now, I've heard some axe sharpeners who don't go below 18 degrees per side on their axe bevels. That's actually what I, I tend to sharpen my knives at, around 18 degrees. So, you just got to find what works for you. What I would suggest is just find an angle that feels comfortable at first. Doesn't matter what's on the knife already, just find an angle that you feel comfortable with. Twist your knife into the stone at that angle, and then let the knife follow its own curve. Now if you've got a knife with belly, as you get to that tip area, you have to raise your hand up and let the knife follow that curve. So imagine there's a ball or a marble here you're putting pressure down, just twisting your hand, and then as you pull the knife, you're putting pressure down, and imagine a ball just following along the whole edge of the knife. So I'm gonna move my finger along with the pressure that my hand is putting down. And once you get the knife on the stone and you start moving it, you'll, you'll, you'll understand what I'm talking about. This is not something you're going to be able to learn through video. It does require hands-on training. So grab a stone, grab a knife, and just try it. Just lock that angle in that you want it. Twist your knife into the stone just a little bit. Not heavy pressure, just light, subtle pressure. And then let the knife follow its own curve. Let it follow its own trajectory. Same thing when you switch sides. When you're doing the other side of the stone, instead of twisting this way, you'll be twisting this way. So twist the knife into the stone, get that angle, and let that knife follow its own trajectory. Do this one-handed. Get used to it. And once you've got that down, you can then incorporate your other hand. And with your other hand, you can actually pinpoint pressure all along the blade, grinding in specific points until you've been gone across the entire edge. And then you can finish it up with those long stro strokes again. So if you're grinding in specific points, just imagine little, little overlaps where you've ground the metal down a little bit, this side's a little bit higher, this side's a little bit lower, the next side's a little bit higher. 
well to even those all out just do a few long sweeping strokes and that'll raise each each side up you know and get them all back in alignment you can also use this hand to help support the knife to keep wobble out if you're going perpendicular to the stone like this the tendency for your hand to roll is greater so I always advise putting the knife at a 45 degree angle to the stone that gives you more contact area on the stone and it prevents your hand from rolling so much rolling is not a bad thing it will create a convex edge so if that's what you're after by all means go perpendicular to the stone don't worry about it if that's actually how you're more comfortable going perpendicular to the stone by all means do it whatever works for you is going to be the best way I'm just showing you guys how I do it so once you've got the technique down where you just twist into the stone and let the knife follow its own curve and then you incorporate your other hand grinding in specific spots and then incorporating long strokes again once you've got those moves down you're ready to sharpen that right there gentlemen and ladies if you're watching is my entire technique easy peasy nothing to it now we're going to go ahead and get started. I've dulled this edge and I will bring you guys down and show you. I should have a reflection of light on this edge where I just dulled it. It should be flat. So if you're looking at an apex, you know it's a triangle. I just cut that tip off and it should be flat. Now, When you look at it under light directly into the blade, that flat spot should reflect back to you. You should see a white ribbon of light. So here we have the knife. When you look at it directly under light, you can see that white ribbon of light reflecting back to us. That's showing that edge is flat. What we want to do now is we want to grind both sides of this knife until that reflection of light disappears. When that light reflection disappears, we should have a sharp knife. I'll show you guys where the bevel is currently. And we'll go ahead and get started. So you may ask, what's the point of cutting the edge off of a knife? Well, as you use a knife and you make cuts, you start to impact that metal. So that metal starts impacting into itself, chipping out, going dull. And if you've got a real old knife, especially one that hasn't ever been sharpened, that metal is going to be really fatigued. So if you sharpen it, put an edge on it, there's a possibility when you start using it, that fatigued metal is going to fail. And when it fails, you'll start getting chips. The knife will go dull much quicker than you think it should. So cutting that fatigued metal off starts you out with fresh metal. You've ground off all that fatigue and when you make a new edge, you're making a new edge into new steel and it should last you longer. I do recommend when you first start out that you start with a cheaper knife with a caveat. You don't want to start with a cheap kitchen knife or a cheap gas station knife with mystery steel. You want to start out with something like a Ganzo or maybe a Kershaw Crown, something with a budget steel. Something that's been heat treated. Something that will actually allow you to create an edge. Some of those gas station knives, the steel is so soft and gummy that they can be more difficult to sharpen than say a knife in 440C steel. You can grind and grind and grind on it and it'll never feel like you're getting anywhere. Um, also, when, when I sharpen, and the way I'm going to show you in this video is I, I grind the knife to a burr. 
what a burr is is when you sharpen on one side of the knife you're grinding that metal as you grind it it will start to curl up onto the opposite side so if you're on this side sharpening that metal will curl up on the other side right here so you should be able to feel it and with magnifi magnification you should be able to see it and I will show you that when we get to that point if you're after plateau sharpening or putting a micro bevel on a knife unfortunately I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that I've never been able to consistently achieve micro bevels but the plateau method of sharpening where you remove that ribbon of light is kind of in line with what we're going to do here finally when you get a stone for whatever knife you're going to sharpen I recommend you get something that's going to cut the steel a lot of forums and people you talk to will recommend getting say a 1000 grit water stone that's in my opinion too low of a grit yeah you can sharpen a knife with that grit however it's going to take a while especially if you've got a really old knife that hasn't ever been sharpened you can grind on that knife for a half hour to an hour and feel like you're getting nowhere because that stone cuts so slowly I always recommend at least a 500 grit stone maybe 600 grit something that you know is going to cut that steel in our particular case we're going to start with a 320 grit Sahira chemical stone now this is a fairly affordable stone so we're going to start with a 320 grit stone tonight which may sound pretty coarse but this Sahira chemical stone is actually pretty slow as far as cutting speed and I'll show you that once we get started it's up to you on how you want to first go about it you can actually go one-handed find that angle you want to sharpen it twist your knife into the stone let it follow its own curve you can either do single strokes like this into the stone you can go in reverse edge trailing strokes like this or you can go back and forth in the fashion that I'm going to show I do this because it helps grind the knife a little quicker and it also helps me keep that angle locked into the stone as I'm going and you can also do it however you feel comfortable if you want to use both hands I always recommend using both hands it helps keep the wobble out so we're gonna put the knife at a 45 degree angle and it doesn't have to be exactly 45 degree angle you know you can be off a little bit you can be up here you can be down here just just as long as the knife has a larger area of contact than going perpendicular if you're going straight on like I said your, your hand is gonna roll so find what's comfortable for you find that angle you want twist into the stone at that angle and start to sharpen if you want you can sharpen the knife entirely with just long strokes like this how do you know when you're done how do you know when you're ready to switch sides that's where the burr comes in as you sharpen on this side of the knife as I was saying earlier that metal is going to start to curl up around the other side so if I can feel a burr all the way along the edge from the bottom to the tip from the heel to the tip if I can feel a burr across that whole edge I know I'm ready to switch if you want to do it another way go 10 strokes on one side And then flip the knife over and go 10 strokes on that side
Once you're done with that, start looking at your edge under light. You want to see that ribbon of light, that reflection of light we saw earlier, start to disappear. So I can still see a ribbon of light across this entire edge. So we're nowhere near done. If that's what you're seeing on your knife, keep going. Give it another 10 strokes on each side. Don't worry about speed. Go as fast or as slow as you're comfortable with. So we did 10 strokes on both sides. I'm gonna look at the knife. And I can start seeing that reflection of light is slowly disappearing. And I'll bring you guys down and show you that. So here we have the knife. We can get that reflection of light to shine on it. So there we go. So it's starting to fade. It's not not as noticeable as it was. It's getting harder to detect. So the tip is actually looking pretty good. I, I think the belly I can see it right there. Right there, you can see it. So the belly still got a little bit of reflection. But it's getting smaller. And that's what we're looking for. Once it's completely gone, we should have a sharp knife. So we're just going to continue 10 strokes per side. Once again, I want to check my work. Looking for that reflection of light. And I still got light across the whole edge. Now you may ask why am I doing 10 strokes. It's just an arbitrary number. You can go with whatever you're comfortable with. If you want to do 15 strokes, 20 strokes, 5 strokes, whatever you want to do. I lost count there. Again, we're going to look. I can start feeling an edge coming. All right, the closer we get, the harder this is gonna to be to see. So you can see right there, there's some light reflecting, but this back portion, there's just a little nibbin right there. So we're almost done with this back section. We got some reflection here. It's looking like it's clearing up. Still got some reflection in the belly and of course the tip area. So it's slowly going away. You see we got a spot right here. We're pretty close. So what you can do now is you can actually do pinpoint grinding. You can pinpoint each one of these spots and just grind in those areas. However, I'm just going to keep going with long strokes until we form a burr. 
I don't know if you guys can see it or not, but I got a small crack right here. You see the bubbles popping up when I press down. I'm going to have to lap the stone to see if I can get that out. I just went over it quickly with my diamond my diamond plate to see if I could get it out real quick, but it's a little deeper than that, so I'm going to have to go at this a little a little harder. That is one thing about water stones. you got to be careful. They can break on you. You also have to maintain them, so as you use them, especially in the middle area, they can start to gully, and they'll look like a skateboard ramp, you know, a half pipe concaved. When that happens, you need to lap them flat. Uh, a cheap way to do it is just take them outside on the sidewalk, clean the sidewalk off really well, and then just scrub it back and forth on the sidewalk until it's flat. You can put pencil diagrams across the stone like that. Scrape it across the stone or across the sidewalk until those diamond patterns are gone. Or if you've got a diamond plate, just rub it back and forth until they all disappear. And you got yourself a flat stone. Alright, so we're going to get back to this. And ten strokes each side. Pressure, I'm only using the weight of my hands. I'm not pushing down on the stone. You want to let the stone do as much of the work as possible. If you start applying heavy pressure, especially in one spot, you can actually grind your bevel lopsided. So just use the weight of your hands. Rotate that pressure as you go along the stone. Imagine the knife is a U. You want to start at one end and rotate that pressure to the other end. And all it is, it's just a, it's a subtle, it's a subtle thing as you're twisting into the stone. You're just kind of putting forward pressure as you go. You'll feel it. I think I've got that reflection of light pretty well taken care of everywhere except in the belly. just about done. I got two little spots. One right at the tip and one right in the belly. I can feel a burr starting to develop. So I know we're apexing at least down in the base of the knife. And we're almost done. 
and I'll get this burr built up so that you guys can see it across the whole edge. Now, if you skip and miss your angle like I just did there, the stone will make a, a very distinct sound and it will let you know that your angle is off. Don't be scared of that. I mean, it's going to happen. It happens to everyone. You know, if it happens, just keep going or stop and reset and start your stroke over. It's not, it's not that big of a deal. I think going those last few strokes I've pretty much cut most of the burr off. Now as you can see I did 20 strokes. I want to get that burr developed so you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, so the last set of strokes I did was on this side of the knife. So as the stone was going across this side, the metal was curling around to the other side. So I should have a burr over here. And you should be able to actually see this. So I'm not gonna be able to show you the burr without magnification. So this is the side that we were just sharpening on. So the burr is formed on the other side. And you can see that little jagged line right on the very apex of the knife. That is the burr. I hope you can see that. Now with that burr being on this side of the knife, you can definitely feel it with your finger. As you run your finger down, it feels like a scratchy like a scratchy feeling and I can actually get my fingernail caught on it that very faint white line right at the apex of the knife that is the burr it's really subtle because I didn't form a gigantic burr but it's there So once you've developed the burr, you've got a couple of options. You can either break the burr off by going back and forth across the stone with very light pressure. And what that'll do is that'll flip flop that burr until it just breaks off. So imagine taking a uh, coat hanger and just bending it back and forth until the friction snaps it. It's kind of the same principle. So you can go ahead and cut the burr off or you can just move on to your next stone. Now, I always like to go to my next stone burr-free or close to burr-free. So I'm going to go ahead and do a few strokes on this side. Get that burr centered up and pushed over. Do a few strokes on this side. And now I'm going to do alternating strokes. Again, I'm using light pressure here. You want to do it one handed? By all means, do what's comfortable for you. And I just seen a little bit of it break off. It 
feeling my edge. I don't feel it. So we've now apexed the knife. We have formed a burr. For the most part, we've broken that burr off. So with this knife, we should now be able to cut. Now it's not gonna be super refined, but it should cut through paper. It may not push cut but it should at least slice it. As you can see, we're slicing paper. There is a hiccup right here in the belly, but I think I got a burr there. Make sure before you try to move on to a finer stone, that the knife is sharp on your core stone. If it's not sharp on your core stone, it's not gonna get sharp on your fine stone. So this is where our bevel is after 320 grit stone. If you wanted to stop here, or if this was the only stone you had, you could strop this knife and be ready to go. However, I'm going to take this knife even further and show you guys how, to, how I uh, refine the edge even further. And you can kind of see some burr left right in here. See that reflection of light? Just let me know I still got some burr on there. Which is fine. We'll take it off with the finer stones and if we don't get it completely off, we will remove it with the strop. So that's where we are currently. We're going to move on from the 320 grit stone to a 2000 grit. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flatten this stone. It's been a while since I've done it. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to get this guy nice and flat since we started out with a flat stone. Now this is a Nubatama Ume. 2000 grit. This is a very hard, fairly coarse stone for 2000 grit. And as you can see, I've used it quite a few times and it's not very, it's not out of flat. Not by much. Just a few little high and low spots. So we'll get those worked out. With this stone, we're going to follow the exact same procedure we did for the last one. The difference is, we don't have that reflection of light that we can follow now. So you're going to have to look at the edge bevel and determine when you're done by the scratches and how the edge feels to you. So I showed you where the bevel was. I'm going to make 10 passes on one side. I'm going to bring you back down and show you what this new scratches look like compared to the old one. Okay, so we just made 10 scratches or 10 passes on this side of the knife. And as you can see the bevel up close to the top, going towards the spine, you can still see the old scratches. So 
So my angle's not quite on point. I need to drop the spine closer to the stone. Because I'm not quite hitting that shoulder area. So I'm going more obtuse on my angle than I need to be. So that's what the 2000 grit scratches look like. And again, these are the 320 grit scratches. It's real hazy, real, real satiny. And this is starting to polish a little bit. So what you have to do is you have to just look at your scratch patterns, get all those 320 grit scratches out and that's how you know you're ready to move on. Now you can, of course, sharpen on this stone until you reach a burr again, but it's not necessary. We've already reached the burr with the 320 grit. We know the knife is sharp. All we want to do now is refine that edge. We want to get the knife scratched up with the 2000 grit scratches as opposed to the 320 grit scratches. I may form a burr, but it's not going to be intentional. What I'm doing here is I'm looking at the scratch pattern. I'm making sure I'm hitting the entire bevel, which I am. Everything's looking good on that side. So on this side, I know my angle was too obtuse, so I have the spine too high. I know I need to drop that spine back closer to the stone so I can hit that shoulder where I missed those scratch marks. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to drop that spine a little bit. I'm going to twist the knife into the stone. And I'm going to look at my scratch pattern again. And I'm still, still not quite on it in some areas. So I'm going to go back over it one more time. I'm going to drop the knife even more. And that should be good enough. I don't want to drop it much more because I want to start reprofiling this knife all together and that's not what we're after here. I'm going to go back over this side. I'm going to check my scratch pattern. Everything's looking really good. I'm going to do another 10 strokes on this side. Again, check my scratch pattern. Looking really good. I'm going to do a final 10 strokes on the other side. And then we're going to start counting down. What do I mean by counting down? Well, we just did 10 strokes. Now I'm going to do about 8 strokes. And do that on both sides. Then 6 strokes. 4 strokes two strokes
Now I'm just going to do single strokes. I'm going to check my scratch pattern again. Looking pretty good. So you may be wondering what was the point of doing those countdown strokes, eight, six, four, two, one. The main purpose of that is if I had a burr on the knife, that will help minimize it or eliminate it altogether. I already knew the scratches were reaching from the top of the spine, or rather the top of the shoulder to the apex. So I was good there. All I wanted at that point was to just make sure there was nothing on the apex of the knife. So doing a countdown like that just helped minimize and eliminate any burr. So here you go, you can start seeing, I got some funny striations where I didn't quite keep my angle consistent. And you can see it's almost like a, like a step, like a staircase. That's completely fine, it's not a problem. It just means my edge is gonna be a little convex. It's gonna be a little round, which is completely fine. With freehand sharpening, it's never gonna be perfectly flat. There's just no way to do it. Human hand is gonna, it's gonna rotate a little. So don't be concerned with that. Again, got a little discoloration back here because I didn't quite get those scratches set properly, but it's good enough for me because we're gonna move on from this stone to yet another one. However, if you wanted to stop here, you totally could. You could drop the knife or just run with it as is. So you can actually see that staircase a little more on this side where my angle wasn't quite consistent. There's like a demarcification line right in the middle where one stroke was at one angle and the next stroke was another angle. Not a problem though. It'll all work itself out once I strop it. So this is going to be my final stone. This is a 4000 grit from Nubatama. Again, I'm going to flatten the stone before we get started. Now, with this stone, it likes to load up with steel deposits as I use it. So I'm going to use another diamond stone and just kind of create a, a slurry, a mud. This mud helps generate or helps prevent the stone from loading up so badly. It also helps polish the uh, scratches out of the previous stone. So with this stone, this is basically like a polishing stone in our case. So how do you know when you're done on this stone? Well, this one's going to be mostly aesthetics. You're just going to look at it and keep using it. Keep sharpening on it until you get those scratches where you want them. Stone is going to take the scratch pattern we got from the 2000 and brighten it up. We're going to get a nice luster from it. And we just want to make sure we get that luster even. And as pretty as we can make it off of this stone. So we just ran the stone, or ran this knife across the stone ten times. And this is our scratch pattern. It is starting to shine up. And it's starting to remove those 2000 grit scratches. Again, this is where the 2000 grit looks. And this is our 4000 grit. And the more we go, the more the scratches are going to come out 
and the brighter that finish is going to become. So here you can see, kind of getting a little bit of that load up as I was talking about. So I'm just going to run my diamond plate back over it one more time. Get those removed and generate a little bit more of a slurry. So I'm just going to do 10 strokes, probably three or four times on each side. And then I'll look at the scratch pattern and see where I need to work on. All right, so now I'm going to check my progress. See how we're doing. How we're doing. So I need a little more work in the base and the tip area on both sides and we'll be pretty much done so I figure another 10 strokes per side and then we'll do another countdown So I put my hand on the knife and then my fingers spread to help distribute weight across the whole blade. And I still got a little nip right there in the base I need to work. So I'm going to put my finger directly over that and just kind of work it back and forth in small strokes. I'm going to look at it. Make sure I got the area I want, which I haven't yet, so I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to lengthen my stroke out a little bit longer. Check it again. And I've hit the area I need. So, what I'm going to do now is just do a few more long strokes to blend it all in. I'm pretty much done on that side. Ten strokes again. Check my work. This side is looking nice. So I don't need to do anything extra on that. So now I'm going to do, again, alternating strokes, 8, 6, 4, 2, and then do some single strokes on each side. But before I do, I'm going to clean up this load up. Now it's not necessary to do this, in fact it may actually 
affect your scratch pattern if you do. But I'm okay with that because I'm going to strop afterwards. And I know the stropping is going to help blend everything back in. So we're going to do eight strokes per side. Light pressure. Not even the weight of my hand. Now with light pressure, you can get a finer edge. So when you're doing your finishing strokes, you always want to lighten up. So after all that hard work, this is what our scratch pattern, our bevel looks like now. Again, it's a little splotchy, but we're going to fix that when we shop it. When I strop, I like to use just a piece of leather. Now I've got white compound on this. Compound is just a wax based with usually aluminum oxide as the abrasive suspended inside of it. You just take it and you scrub it on the piece of leather like a crayon. And when you strop, you want to do edge trailing strokes. So you want the edge facing away and you want to drag it backwards. Reason being, if you go the other way, edge leading, you're going to cut into your leather. That's no good. You just do back and forth strokes, light pressure. You don't need to, uh, you don't need to push down on this. Go at the same angle you sharpened up. If you got really soft leather, you may even want to drop the angle a little bit more because the leather compresses, and as it compresses it can roll over your edge. If it wraps around your edge and you strop, you're going to strop that edge right off. So if you've got soft leather, just go at even a lower angle than what you sharpened it and you should be okay. Make sure you get every bit of the edge from the base to the tip you need to concentrate on just the tip or just the belly, that's perfectly fine. You don't need to do a whole lot of stropping. I usually do about 10 to 15 strokes per side, and that's it. If you got a really big stubborn burr, you may need to go a little bit longer. But 10 to 15 has always been a good, a good stopping point for myself. So this is what we look like after stropping. Still got some deeper scratches back here in the base where I didn't I didn't hit those on that 2000 grit stone properly so obviously the 4000 grit stone couldn't remove them. However, if you hold it in the right light, you can't even see them. I'm also going to magnify this so you guys can get a get a better picture of what the scratch pattern looks like. Because even at this fine grid of 4000 there are still scratches in the bevel. So 
So it's got a nice reflection on it for 4000 grit. Not bad at all. Give you guys a super close up of this edge now. So after all that, the big question is, how does it cut? That's very well. You don't get the edge caught. Cutting paper can help identify any issues you may have in the edge. If you've got burrs, it'll obviously hang up in the paper, it won't cut appropriately. Um, you can also feel catches as you drag the knife through the paper. If there's any catches, you're going to want to go back to your stones and get those corrected out strop it again and then retest. I usually test on paper after every stone just to make sure the edge is where I want it to be. A lot of times you'll still have burrs doing that so you got to overlook the burrs but it's just a good just a good uh, helpful tip if you want to know where your edge is and how well you're doing. Also magnification you can always get jeweler's loops like this. They do sell clips that you can clip onto your phone Unfortunately, I haven't been able to get it to work with the iPhone very well, so I have to kind of just lay it on top of the phone and <laughs> kind of move it around and get it to where it focuses. But magnification is a big help. It's a big, big tool to help you identify problems in your apex and your edge. I hope this was helpful to someone. If you have any questions or you want any comments, give me some tips. I'm always open to listen. Um, just leave them down below. I appreciate everyone watching. Y'all have a good one.